The Shadow Out of Time by Howard Phillips Lovecraft. The Awakening. Nathaniel Wingate Peasley's eyes fluttered open to the unfamiliar, stark white ceiling of his room in Arkham, a stark contrast to the dark alien landscapes that haunted his dreams. His head throbbed with a pain that echoed from another time, another place. He tried to move, but his limbs felt foreign, as if they belonged to someone else. Father, can you hear me? A voice broke through the haze, belonging to a young man with his mother's gentle eyes and a determined set to his jaw that was all his own. Where am I? Nathaniel's voice sounded strange to his own ears, distant and hollow. You're home, father, in Arkham, the young man replied, his voice laced with a mix of hope and concern. You've been unwell. Nathaniel's mind raced, trying to grasp at the fragments of memories that seemed to slip through his fingers like sand. I was teaching. Then, nothing. What happened to me? The young man who Nathaniel now recognized as his son Wingate took a deep breath. You collapsed, father. Five years ago. You've been... different since then. Different how? A cold sweat broke out across Nathaniel's forehead, and his heart thrummed against his ribs like a caged bird. You spoke of places no one knew, scribbled strange symbols, and you didn't know us. Wingate's voice trembled slightly. Nathaniel tried to sit up, but a wave of dizziness forced him back onto the pillow. The room was silent except for the distant ticking of the grandfather clock and the soft whisper of the curtains in the night breeze. I don't remember any of that. It's as if I have woken from a long, dark dream. Wingate reached out, taking his father's hand. We hoped you'd come back to us, and now you have. But we need to know, father, what did you see in those lost years? What secrets did you uncover? Nathaniel closed his eyes, trying to piece together the jigsaw puzzle of his past. Images flashed before him, vast libraries, alien landscapes, and a race of beings with knowledge beyond human comprehension. I saw, I saw a great race, he whispered. Beings that could traverse time and space, exchanging minds with others to learn, to explore. Wingate's eyes widened. Is that where you've been all this time? In another's body, in another world. Perhaps, Nathaniel murmured, but it's all so fragmented. I need to understand, to remember. As weeks turned into months, Nathaniel and Wingate delved into the depths of the arcane and the cosmic, piecing together the fragmented memories of those lost years. Together, father and son embarked on a journey to unravel the mysteries of Nathaniel's lost years, seeking answers to questions that spanned the cosmos. And as Nathaniel's memories slowly returned, they revealed a tapestry of existence far grander and more terrifying than either could have imagined. The Great Exchange Nathaniel Wingate Peasley sat in his office, the alien nature of the books and papers around him mirroring the strangeness of the stars. Professor Peasley, are you all right? Miss Green asked with concern. Nathaniel's response was distant, I'm not sure. The room seemed to shift, and he found himself in an infinite library. Understanding the languages of the books as ethereal beings moved between the shelves. A voice in his mind spoke of a journey through time and space, witnessing civilizations ebb and flow, and carrying countless lifetimes memories. Nathaniel's initial panic gave way to curiosity. He questioned his selection for this journey, and the voice assured him of his unique suitability for this knowledge exchange. Returning to his office reality, Ms. Green's worried voice reached him. Professor, you've been staring into space. Are you okay? With clarity and determination, Nathaniel affirmed. Yes, Ms. Green. I am on the brink of an adventure that will change everything. He began to write chronicling a journey to reality's edges and beyond. Echoes of the Past 
Nathaniel Wingate Peasley sat in his study, the dim light from a desk lamp illuminating the ancient tomes and artifacts that had become his obsession. Shadows stretched across the walls, creating an atmosphere of ancient mystery. Father, are you all right? Wingate asked with concern as he entered the room. Peasley looked up, a weary determination in his eyes. I'm fine, son, he replied with a smile. Wingate peered at the open book on the desk. These symbols, he began, but Peasley cut him off with a gesture towards a drawing. Peasley's voice was low and steady. It's as if I've seen them before. Wingate, intrigued, took a seat opposite his father. You've never been to Australia before your episode. Peasley nodded. Yet it feels familiar, as if through another's eyes. Wingate's interest grew. Like time travel. Peasley tapped the book. Similar, but through the mind. Wingate pondered, then spoke. These visions, they must mean something. Peasley agreed. They're a gift and a curse. We must study these relics. They hold the key to unlocking the mysteries of the past and my own mind. Together they continued their nocturnal quest, unraveling the enigma of Nathaniel Wingate Peasley's lost years and the profound knowledge bestowed upon him by a civilization beyond time. The Desert Secret The sun dipped below the horizon of the great sandy desert as Robert B. F. Mackenzie, the mining engineer, surveyed the enigmatic stone structures before him. Remarkable, he said, turning to Nathaniel Wingate Peasley, who had joined him in silence. These symbols, they're not just relics, they're a message. Peasley nodded, his earlier trepidation replaced by resolve. Indeed, and I believe they're connected to the Yithian archives he replied, referencing the book he had uncovered, which contained a history not of our world, but of theirs, penned in his own hand during his lost year. As the stars emerged, Mackenzie's practical mind grappled with the implications. If we can decipher this, he mused, it could redefine our understanding of time itself. That night, under a canopy of constellations, Peasley detailed the book's origins, a tome of extraterrestrial knowledge chronicling the great race's temporal voyages. It's a guide, he concluded, and a warning. Come morning, their exploration was interrupted by the arrival of Dr. Helena Cartwright, a linguist whose expertise in ancient languages might unlock the city's secrets. Her keen eye immediately identified a pattern in the symbols suggesting a map or a code. Mackenzie, invigorated by the new perspective, took charge, his voice firm with determination. We'll document everything. Our findings could be the key to a new era. Peasley watched the horizon, a sense of foreboding creeping into his thoughts. Or the opening of a door best left closed, he murmured. Undeterred, the trio ventured deeper, each discovery leading to more questions. And as they delved into the city's heart, a rumble echoed through the chambers a hint that the city was not as dormant as it seemed and that their presence had awakened something ancient and powerful. Dyer's Quest Professor William Dyer and his team from Miskatonic University were already at the excavation site, with the early morning light providing a clear view of their surroundings. The atmosphere was charged with excitement, they were on the verge of exploring a new section of the ruins, one that held the promise of untold stories. All right, team, Dyer announced. Let's proceed with caution and keep an eye out for any carvings or symbols that resonate with the local legends. The team worked meticulously, uncovering the walls lined with intricate carvings that narrated the saga of a civilization that time had forgotten. In the midst of their exploration, Sarah, one of the archaeologists, exclaimed, Professor, come quickly! She was gesturing towards a massive stone door adorned with curvilinear patterns. Dyer approached, his hands tracing the ancient designs, and the door moved aside, 
revealing a chamber that held a stone tablet inscribed with cryptic symbols. As the team examined the tablet, Dyer realized the significance of their find. It was a tangible link to the ancient race they had been seeking, a key to understanding their visions. Later, as the camp quieted down for the night, Dyer sat contemplating their discovery. Sarah approached and inquired about his well-being. Looking at her, Dyer replied with a sense of contentment. Yes, Sarah, we've made a discovery that will redefine our understanding of history. Under the starlit sky, it was clear to Dyer that their journey was far from over. They had unearthed a secret that would compel humanity to rethink its origins and its future. The Hidden City Nathaniel Wingate Peasley's heart pounded as he stood at the threshold of the Hidden City. The sun was setting, casting long shadows over the labyrinth of ancient stone before him. The ruins he had seen in his visions were now a reality beneath his feet. Are you sure this is the place? Nathaniel asked, his voice barely above a whisper. Yes, father, his son replied, equally in awe. The coordinates you gave us led straight here. As they ventured deeper into the city, the towering titan towers loomed above them, their surfaces etched with carvings that seemed to dance in the fading light. Nathaniel felt a chill, not from recognition but from the sheer alienness of the symbols. They came upon a rectangular vault of rustless metal, half buried in the sand. With trembling hands, Nathaniel opened it to reveal a tome with brittle, aeon-brown pages filled with the same cryptic symbols that adorn the city. Dad, what does it say? His son asked, peering over his shoulder. Nathaniel, having learned to decipher these glyphs, began to translate. It's a chronicle, he said, his voice filled with wonder, a record of exchanges and interactions with distant realms. They sat on the ground, surrounded by the remnants of what appeared to be ceremonial platforms. Nathaniel read aloud, his son listening intently as the story unfolded, a tale of a civilization that reached out to the stars and beyond. As night fell, the city transformed. The subterranean mazes whispered secrets of the past, and the patterns on the stone surfaces glimmered like stars. Nathaniel felt an overwhelming sense of connection to this place. Father, are you all right? His son's concerned voice broke through his thoughts. Nathaniel looked up, his eyes reflecting the cosmic tapestry of the night sky. I've never been more certain of anything in my life, he said. We have uncovered a legacy that redefines our understanding of history. Together they explored the hidden city, each discovery a piece of the puzzle that was Nathaniel's fragmented past. And as the first light of dawn touched the horizon, Nathaniel knew that his journey was only just beginning. The Pre-Human Connection Nathaniel Wingate Peasley stood at the edge of the ancient ruins. The sun was setting over the great sandy desert, casting long shadows across the stone blocks that had puzzled and intrigued him for so long. Professor Dyer, Nathaniel called out. Look at this! He pointed to the hieroglyphs that seemed to dance in the fading light. Dyer joined him, his eyes widening. These symbols, they're telling a story. Dyer placed a hand on his shoulder. These dreams you've had, the amnesia, it's all part of a greater journey. Nathaniel nodded, his mind racing with memories. The book I found here, the one encased in metal, it spoke of knowledge passed down through the ages. Dyer asked, his gaze fixed on the horizon and you believe it's true? Nathaniel replied, I've seen their city in my dreams, walked its corridors, and learned from its people. As the stars began to appear in the twilight sky, Nathaniel felt a sense of peace wash over him. He was a bridge between worlds, a keeper of ancient secrets. Nathaniel's connection to the pre-human race was a beacon for the future. The Cosmic Tapestry Nathaniel Wingate Peasley stood at the edge of the abyss, the ancient book clutched in his trembling hands. 
The subterranean city loomed before him, its structures casting long shadows that seemed to whisper of Eon's past. He could feel the weight of countless eyes upon him, watching, waiting. Professor Peasley, are you all right? Asked a concerned voice behind him. It was young Thomas, the assistant who had been with him since the beginning of this expedition. Peasley turned, his gaze distant. I'm not sure, Thomas. This book, it's written in my hand, yet it tells of times long before humanity's first breath. What does it mean? Thomas peered over Peasley's shoulder at the open pages. It's like you're a part of something much bigger. Peasley nodded slowly. Yes, these writings, he gestured to the book. They suggest a universe teeming with life, far older and more advanced than us. But we're part of that universe, aren't we? Thomas asked, his curiosity piqued. And in a way, yes. But perhaps... Only as a brief moment in its vast history, Peasley replied, his voice tinged with awe. Thomas looked around at the towering architecture. It makes you feel insignificant, doesn't it? Peasley agreed. And yet, there's a connection. This book, these ruins, they're part of something we're only just beginning to understand. The two stood in silence, contemplating the enormity of the revelation. The air was thick with the scent of ancient stone. Suddenly, a low rumble echoed through the space and a section of the wall slid open. Peasley's heart raced. Should we open it? Thomas asked, excitement in his voice. Peasley hesitated, then nodded. Yes, it's time we faced whatever truth lies beyond. Together they approached the opening, the future of their understanding, and perhaps humanity's perception of the cosmos, hanging in the balance. As they lifted the lid, a brilliant light spilled forth, and they braced themselves for the unknown. 